Hi, I'm Nick Mendolia with Visual South. Today we're going to talk about some highlights and features of the new Infor Visual version 10. In this demonstration, we're going to show some highlights of Visual's version 10 and how it can help manufacturers improve their processes. We're also going to show some highlights of previous versions, just in case you're on an older version and want to see what's happened since the version you're on up to version 10. Let's get started. One of the things that we always want to think about when we're thinking about an upgrade, of course, is what are we on today and how long is what we're on today going to be supported by Infor? So looking at Infor support lifecycle policy at all the previous versions, we can see we have a general availability when the product was released, end of mainstream maintenance. And what that means is that Infor will no longer create patches for the software. It's deemed in maintenance mode. So if there is a significant bug in the software, then they can do some extended maintenance, meaning that they will fix things that are major flaws that might be found in the software, but they're not going to do minor enhancements or, or patch updates to it anymore. And sustaining maintenance means that they won't do any of that anymore. And you really do need to upgrade to a newer version that is supported. So looking at the latest two versions, nine and eight in particular, uh, because everything prior to eight is already unsupported. And as of today, we are in April of 2021. So if you're on eight or earlier, you're no longer supported in mainstream maintenance, meaning you're not gonna get patches or typical patches delivered anymore. We have two more years for that extended maintenance period. So if there are significant flaws that might be found along the way, then they will patch those. Uh, but in general, we are at the end of that mainstream maintenance. So that's when you start thinking about time to upgrade. So let's move forward and look at the highlights. And what we're going to do is look at the highlights uh, of significant changes with each release from 7.1 to 9 and then of course 10. And why are we going to cover all of those? Maybe you're already on 9. Uh, you may see enhancements on previous versions that you didn't realize you have. There are literally hundreds of enhancements that have come out since 7.1 up to 10. And a lot of people don't realize what some of those enhancements are. So it's good to cover what we think is some of the, the highlights of those. Then we'll take a deeper dive into 10 and, and go a little bit further and show some live software. And really the focus on 10 is business improvement enhancements. We want to know, you know, what did 10 provide us that will help us improve our processes and business functions. And I always say, be sure to read the release notes for each version, not just the current version. If you're just reading the release notes for 10, you're only seeing the changes from 908 to 10. Now, you're not seeing all of the changes from the release that you might be on. So if you're on release 80, for instance, you didn't see all of the releases that came out in all the nine. 9.0.x series. So you want to read each of those release notes along the way because like I said there are hundreds of them and you want to what you may think is very important to you we may not highlight here so this is by no means a, a highlight show to cover every single change that has been made to the system. We're only looking at the, the bigger things that we think are important. However, everybody finds something small that is important to them. So let's look at uh, 7.1 first. Uh, 7.1 is where we came out with uh, multi-site, multi-entity functionality. And this really is the significant change as far as database schema going from 7.0 to anything newer causes some significant changes. So you have the addition of the entity and site tables, which attach almost to every table in the database. So if you have reports or macros or other customizations that you might have written, grabbing data or updating data in certain tables, those tables or that data in those tables may no longer exist. They may have been split off to other tables. So that's where the biggest change has been uh, since 7.0. RMA enhancements, we'll take a look at some of those. Customizable user-defined tabs and fields, the ability to add your own tabs tabs. Customer order entry, for example, has tabs across the top. You could add your own tabs and also put fields within those tabs that have drop-down lists, Boolean fields, date fields, and so on. Another big change with 7.1 up is the decommission of SQL base. Uh, so now if you're moving from a 7.0 environment or earlier and you're running SQL base, you do need to upgrade with what we recommend to uh, Microsoft SQL Server. And in this version, you can run 2008 or Microsoft Server 2008. 
or uh, Oracle 11G. We don't see a lot of Oracle installations anymore. Most are converting to SQL Server. So looking at the site changes, up top we could see in a typical form, this is the site maintenance form, but you would normally see this in, in other forms also throughout the system. We now have an entity and a site, so you're identifying what entity and what site I'm working in. And you can see that we have multiple entities. Think of entities as financial entities. Each can have a unique chart of accounts and costing structure and different tax IDs. The site level is really a another manufacturing facility that falls under an entity. So an entity might have only one site underneath it that manufactures, or it can have multiple manufacturing sites, but they roll up the same chart of accounts up to that entity site. The site can also have the ability to do their own separate planning and scheduling from all the other sites. RMA status enhancements, uh, added evaluation and repair types. Formerly, there was just credit and replace. And when you're taking an RMA from a customer, the fact is that you may not know if it's a credit or a replace until you receive it back from the customer. Having the evaluation status now gives you that ability to evaluate and then change the status to what it should be after it's evaluated rather than having to choose one prior to receiving the product back. And then of course there's a repair status. You know, it's coming in, it's not a credit or a replace, I'm, I'm fixing it, sending it back. And I can also identify if it's under warranty. Looking at version 8.x, this is where we introduce in for quality management and visual quality goes away. It's rewritten in Mongoose platform. Activities and alerts. We'll talk a little bit about those. Predefined dashboard analytics. Also, we'll talk about that. Scheduled services. That's a, a pretty big one. Now you have the ability to schedule MRP to run overnight, schedule scheduling to run overnight, uh, costing utilities and certain reports. So you have uh, that ability now to be able to set that on a scheduled service to run after hours. Uh, the addition of an API toolkit for developers. Now in the past we used the com objects to do most development, but now there are API toolkits to be able to utilize to write customizations and connect to the visual database. And macros have been moved to the database. This is a this is a big one. Uh, formerly, macros would be stored at the client computer, and that caused some security issues in some cases. So now they are moved to the database. It makes it easier for IT to manage those because it's in the database. They can manage it from one place rather than having to manage each client computer for those macros. And Microsoft SQL Server 2012, Microsoft Server 2012, and Oracle 12C are all supported. So looking at visual quality, here's a screenshot of the former visual quality, looking at the product data collection screen here. That's what it was, and now it looks like this. This is renamed to Infor Quality Management. It runs on a web browser. If you have mobile devices for your quality folks to, to roam the floor doing quality checks, they can do that on a tablet potentially. Uh, you have full access with the Mongoose framework to modify these forms any way you want also. Looking at the predefined dashboard analytics, there's uh, several dozen an analytics that come standard with the system, so you can pick and choose which analytics you want on your screen. They can be graphical or grid. You see a grid in the center of my screen here or graphical elsewhere. And you do uh, click on any of the graphs and it will expand out to the detail behind it in a grid mode. Activities and alerts added to most major functional areas that allows you to create follow-ups or other directions or tasks for other folks. So at the customer order entry screen, for instance, you can create a follow-up to your shipping department that you know they should contact the customer before shipping to find out what dock something needs to be shipped to or you may just want to create a follow-up message so you know you're tracking this order and and it's going to last for a month then two weeks into it i want a reminder that i should contact the customer and give them an update on the status of the order you can assign it to yourself as the task owner or you can assign it to others so looking at version 9.0.x version 9 is where the cumulative upgrade patch versioning came out so no longer will you have to patch individual executables and sql scripts running those each separately it all comes as an executable file now that updates the entire patch and everything in the patch. So if you have executables that have been patched, they'll all get patched at once. They'll, uh, they'll run the SQL scripts for you. It's a very easy patching system now rather than doing all separate steps to do this. If you just run the executable and it upgrades you. The patch updates 
are rather small, but th at the same time, they're able to add functionality enhancements at the same time. So you're not just waiting for one big upgrade at the end of uh, a year or whatever the case may be. If new functionality comes out, they may just include it in one of these patches and just updating to those patches is it's just a matter of running that executable and updating your system. Shop Floor Mobile. We're going to show a little bit about that in the current version 10, where it's been expanded since version 9, but we're going to talk a little bit about it here in 9 also. Uh, notifications. We'll show some of that. Uh, User-defined dashboards. So we looked at uh, the pre-built analytics on a dashboard that we had earlier. We said we had a few dozen of those already built that we can pick and choose to, to use. Uh, version 9 gives you the ability to create your own uh, at an IT level. Lead time life cycle. If you want the ability to be able to track an order from inception to delivery, you can do that now. You can set up workflows to say how much lead time happens at each phase. I want three days at the quote. I want 10 days at the order entry cycle and five days in manufacturing or something like that. So the system will, once you set that up, the system will track how much time it actually takes to run a, an entire job from that quote through to shipping and invoicing. So you have a good idea of what your entire product life cycle and lead time is versus uh, guessing with the lead time. And now we're running on SQL Server 2016 on Microsoft Server 2016. Oracle 12C, although if you are running Oracle, then you have to be running on Microsoft Server 2012, not 2016. So looking at Shop Floor Mobile, which was the uh, really nice release, it is a web-based shop floor collection system now. If you have a wedge barcode today, this can basically replace that. Uh, and this is the phase one release. This is the initial release of the shop floor mobile. And what it comes with is the scheduling functionality. And we're gonna show that live in, in what is in visual 10, uh, but we just wanted to highlight it here that whether you have licensing or not, you have the ability to use the scheduling functionality in here. And you'll see how powerful that is. I'm gonna focus on that when we do a live demo here in a minute. But we have labor, material issues to jobs, work orders. We have purchase receipts. So this is what a resource schedule looks like on the scheduling function in Shopfloor Mobile. And basically it is an electronic resource dispatch report. So rather than having a piece of paper or having to print off a new dispatch report every day, now you can have it electronic and at the workstation for them to be able to see what they're supposed to be working on. And you can see the operations are sequenced according to the schedule, but it gives you the ability to drag and drop or prioritize certain operations so that the operators can see which jobs they should be working on in which order. Looking at notifications, you can see that we have email notifications. So now we can automate those emails to the customers when certain events happen within an order cycle. So on this case, you know, as an example, we're saying on a shipment for this particular order, we want the customer to be notified. And in the background, you set up who the contacts are for different orders so it knows who the email is supposed to go to. You also have the ability to follow an order yourself. So not just notifying the customer, but I want to be notified or maybe I just want to be notified and not the customer. So I can choose these different options for what I want to be notified about on this particular order. So looking at version 10, and the focus on business improvement. Uh, the biggest thing is going to be shop floor mobile expanded functionality. Uh, Infor really put a lot of effort in trying to make this tool the go-to for making it easy for the shop floor to report labor, do material transactions, and what we'll see also in enhanced functionality is WIP transactions. And it also gives the supervisors and schedulers a lot more ability to communicate with the shop floor workers on what they're supposed to be working on and check what they're working on. So the work in process inventory tracking is going to be big. We're going to show that a little bit. Customer order line status. We'll talk about that. And expanded notification tokens for those notifications that we just looked at that came out in nine. A uh, big one that came out, cycle count by warehouse location. That really is a nice added functionality. So we don't have to worry about just counting by ABC codes or product codes. Now we can choose a warehouse location and count that location. And now we're running on uh, Microsoft Server 2019, SQL Server 2019, and Oracle 19C. So if you are buying new hardware somewhere along the, the way coming from an older version, odds are you're going to want to look at version 10 because now we can get 
new versions of Microsoft Server and SQL Server to run it on. So the objectives of version 10, we want to increase resource utilization and minimize our downtime. Eliminate transactional errors on the shop floor. That is an ERP killer. So what can we do to help solve that problem? We want to enable the supervisors to communicate more electronically, keep them from having to roam the shop floor to tell people what to do and, and communicate what's going on. Better customer service through automation. So what does Visual 10 solve? Our goal is to maximize the machine resource and utilization, re reduce that downtime in the shop. And the obstacle to doing that is folks are looking for or getting materials to start the job, right? We want to start this job. It's scheduled to start, but we don't have the materials delivered to us yet to, to begin. Uh, and then alternately, when it is in process, where is it? It's between machines, but is it finished? Did, did it move to the next resource? Did it move to a holding area somewhere in the shop that's waiting to go to the next resource? Nobody knows where it is. And then there's confusion about which job we're gonna run next. Do we follow our list when the materials aren't at my machine? Or do I go searching for it? How do I know what I, I should be running? I need to go find my supervisor. So the solution to all of that is, is the shop floor mobile enhancements. Uh, we have that work in process inventory tracking. We'll take a look at that. And shop floor mobile scheduling tools, which provide great clarity to what an operator needs to be running out on the shop floor. So now, looking at shop floor mobile, you'll notice we have three more buttons down at the bottom to work in. And they, these are the things that have been added in version 10. The work in process, the physical inventory. Now we can do a full physical inventory or cycle counting. Uh, and we have shipping entry. and that kind of rounds out the functionality to be able to replace now not just wedge labor barcode or whatever barcode, uh, labor barcoding you're doing, but it also allows us to replace the material barcode. So if you're running barcode transaction system or BTS, now we have those material transactions here that we could potentially replace that. And again, it's all web-based, browser-based, so easy to run either on a computer, a PC, a tablet, or even a phone. So a quick look at what the operator might see on the shop floor when they're doing their labor now. And mine is actually showing that I use my keyboard as opposed to uh, there's a button that you can choose to, to use barcodes, in which case everything below my name up there uh, except for the base ID, would be grayed out because I would just scan one field and it would pretty much fill all of that in, except for the quantity complete. That's what I am telling it I am doing. You know, how many I did, quantity deviated. Uh, so all of that is pretty much the same. So I collect that. But the addition now here is what we have on the right side with this ability to create a move request. And this is tied to that new work in process functionality. Uh, so when I complete an operation and tell it I've completed a certain amount, I now have the ability to tell it that I also need this to be moved by a material handler. And it's going to create a material handler queue. I'm telling it where it needs to be delivered. If it's a drop only, it's just getting delivered to the next operation. So if I'm in the cutting operation and it's got to go to the a break operation, it will know that we're just dropping it off at the break, but someone needs to come move it from my operation to that break operation and, and create that queue. The other option there is whip inventory. So if it's not going to the next operation, if it just needs to be put off to the side for whatever reasons for now, we have an inventory location that it can sit in uh, that's considered a whip inventory location. So it knows that it's whip, it's not real inventory. Uh, but we can track it. So when we are ready to run that next operation, we know where that material is. We have a specific location that we should know where to find it and then create the request to get it and drop it off. So this is what the material handler queue looks like. So as you create those requests along the way, whether it's at a labor ticket or manually, uh, you can create this queue for that material handler so they know what they're supposed to pick up. They know where they're supposed to deliver it to, whether it's going to be to an inventory location in WIP or dropping it off at the next uh, operation. So looking up the inventory location to find out where it is. Stuff is stored in inventory waiting, even though it's still considered WIP. Normally you'd lose track of that because you can't track WIP in inventory. So now we have this new location functionality that ties to WIP. It won't be counted in inventory. It still knows that it's WIP but it allows you to track where it is and create a location for that. So some of the other things uh, that we want to solve with version 10 is bringing more order to your customer orders. 
you know, the obstacle there is orders that have multiple lines. Uh, an order is managed at the order level, at the line level. Keeping customers informed about those changes and any shipments that might happen with their order, and tracking priorities. So what's our solution for that? We have line level status now. So now we can keep one line on hold. Maybe the parts in engineering are at ECN hold or, or whatever the case may be. So instead of having to put the entire order on hold, I only put that line on hold because I can start processing all of the other lines on the order. Uh, expanded notifications. So I can uh, now notify customers at the ship to level rather than at the top level customer level. New notification to tokens to help do that. So I can create specific emails for those ship to locations. Uh, and also the ability to create alternate sender email addresses. Previously, it all came from a generic email address whenever any of these notification emails would go out. Now we have the ability to put a more personalized email address, whether you want it to be your own or your whoever it's coming from's email address. So looking at the line item functionality, we can choose from inherit, which means whatever's at the top level of the order, just use that same status. Or we have the same status as at the top level per line now, released, closed, canceled, or on hold or firm. Notification tokens, uh, when you design those emails, you have the ability now to choose from all of the different ship to notifications to be able to add to that functionality and creating alternate senders for those email addresses going out. So now I can, I can specify uh, at a very detailed level every email that goes out, who do I want it to come from? Hey, now we're going to look at a live demo of Shop Floor Mobile and scheduling. So when I log into Shop Floor Mobile, I have my typical buttons to be able to use in a touch button screen. Again, because this is designed that where it could run on a tablet very well. So think of using a tablet without a keyboard or a mouse and everything is touch button. Generally, the scheduling functionality you'd probably want to use on a PC because you'll see there's a lot of information on there and, and it'll show better on a larger screen. But things like just collecting labor, uh, doing material transactions and purchase receipts and uh, things like physical inventory and shipping are all very easy to do, even on a phone. You have the ability to change your menu so that it fits better on a phone when you shrink it down. So as I change the size of my device, I have the ability to change my menu structure. So one of the things that we just want to focus on here is the scheduling functionality, because everybody gets that regardless of their licensing. So when I go into the schedule, now I can see all of the different resources in my shop. And once I'm in those different resources, then I can drill into show me all of the job operations that are scheduled in those resources. So as an example, if I'm doing the cutoff saw, Here I can see all of the different job orders or work orders that are scheduled to come through my station. I get some visual indicators that let me know that, you know, first of all, this is overdue. I should have started this operation according to the schedule and I haven't yet. I can tell that the materials are there, so there's nothing stopping me from starting it. And any materials that may have come from a previous operation are available to me. Uh, I can see that there has been labor reported to this particular operation already, and I can also see that there's documents. So if I have any documents associated with that particular operation or work order, I can go ahead and highlight this and look at those documents and see what those documents might be. The other thing that I can have here is looking at the list. This is a dispatch report in the order that the schedule says I could be doing it in. However, I have the ability to grab any one of these as the scheduling person with proper security of course to move this around so maybe i want to move this uh, 02059 work order to the top and make that the highest priority i can easily do that on a mobile device you can just double tap on any of these and it'll put them put it in drag mode where you can just drag it with your finger where you want it uh, so if you are using a tablet it'll work there very well also so you have the ability to do that. You also have the ability to put priorities on all of these. So let's say the same 2059, I wanna make that a priority one. This way that priority sticks to it regardless of the next time the schedule runs, it will still know and I'll still know, my operator will still know that, hey, that's, that's a priority one regardless of anything else that might move above it uh, and that when it gets rescheduled. 
So I have that ability to put one, two, and three as a priority code uh, to travel along with those operations. The other nice thing about this is from a labor standpoint, if you chose to, you can also do your labor collection here, where you know instead of using the regular labor where you're just going to scan an operation from a piece of paper, uh, you don't have to scan. You don't need a piece of paper at all with this. You can just choose the operation you're working on and choose your start setup or start run. And that's another way that an operator can utilize this as an electronic dispatch to work from as opposed to using a paper traveler. I can also see any specifications related to that operation. So if there's work instruction uh, that would be normally created in visual at the operation level, I can see that here as an operator. So they get to see all of their work instructions and documents, drawings and anything else that's associated with it. Uh, from the document management system. If there was materials I was waiting for in WIP, if I was to use the WIP functionality that is now available in version 10, I can go and look at where that work in process inventory is. I can create a move request from here. I'm done with this and I want to create a manual move request to move it on to the next operation. I have the ability to do that. And that's just a quick look at what we can do in Shop Floor Mobile. Of course, there is a lot more functionality that we have with this that uh, we have video features on our website at visualsouth.com that you can go and take a look at. Okay, so what are the next steps? Everyone's situation is different. We get that. And it starts with a conversation. So if you think that you have questions about upgrading or, or not sure exactly which version you should upgrade to, Schedule a call with uh, your Visual South account manager. If it's Tim O'Brien or Brian Boshi, or feel free to email me also. We have an upgrade request form at our website, visualsouth.com slash upgrade. So if you want to get an estimate on what an upgrade would cost to have us help you with that, just fill out some questions and from that we should be able to get a fairly accurate estimate for you. And also if you want to see a lot more detailed functionality with the shop floor mobile, we have a video series set up on our website at visualsouth.com slash visual shop floor mobile. Thank you for watching. Contact us at visualsouth.com for more information.